It's Mel and Charlie with Florensics. We've got to talk about filtering because for me, filtering has been such a game changer, getting organized, being able to split up the data. I do get a little complex with stuff. So I want to be able to visually show you how I set myself up and kind of how I split my screens up. But let's you know, start from the beginning. If you're a new member, what your filters will automatically look like and kind of how to work around that. So Charlie, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a filter. Um, this is what they're gonna see when they first start. What changes would you make or what would you like to kind of add that you think is important for somebody who's just brand new and starting with us? So when you're brand new to Options Flow, we have this set up at the simplest it can be, which is right here. Um, what Mel is showing. Now, some people will change this one up when they're new because some only want to watch ETFs. They might unselect stock. And some only want to see stocks and not the ETFs. So you do have that option there. And, and it will slow down the flow a lot by, you know, if you only wanted to watch one of those. Um, me and Mel watch both. Now, again, this is for the newer, newer with black box. This is definitely how we recommend it. It's a good way to get that introduction. There's a lot that's coming through. I'm going to show you kind of how I split myself up. And I think it actually helps a little bit more. So I'm going to jump right in and show you how I change my filters. So I'm going to be here and I'm actually going to take off because I like to have tabs dedicated. And, and I have to tell you, this has been an absolute game changer for me because I feel like I'd be a lot more organized by having the information streamlined to show me on each tab. Um, I do get to work from the desktop. I am a full-time trader. Uh, so I am able to easily navigate and constantly check the flow. But I think at the very least, if you set yourself up this way, and again, what I'm now seeing and showing you is that the security type is stock and I wanna see um, all the activity. So in order to see all the activity, and this is really important, this bid ask box right here, I don't want anything highlighted because you have to think this is code, what you're telling it. If you tell it to only show you ask or above the ask, you're not gonna see anything that comes between the spread or bid or below bid. So I, I want to see everything that comes through because I wanna be able to evaluate contract pricing and some of those nuances that we look at more than anything opposed to just filtering out too much information. And so on the stock side of the house, I want to have stock and I'm showing everything, but of course I am a little bit extra. Let's talk about this watch list here. Okay. Watch list. I'm only going to go through one faucet because it's the only way that I use the watch list feature. You are able to set this up as alerts, but we'll keep that separate. Um, I like to use this as a filtering mechanism. Um, so that I can select or exclude certain stocks. And, and why do I do that? Um, because I don't want to see every line of flow that comes into Tesla and Apple. It's just redundant. It's overwhelming. They're the most heavily traded from a common share perspective. So you better believe that they are the most heavily traded from an options flow perspective. I, I want to see what's unusual. So for me, what I like to do is to add a symbol and I already have Tesla here. Let's see if it lets me do it again. I can click here. Now I can select, there's gonna be three options. You could either click omit only or highlight or just save. And now it has it on there. Um, I prefer to omit, don't shoot me. <laughs> you guys, if you listen to me on voice, I don't talk about Tesla a lot, but I will also say that I know that TLAM and Charlie are also looking at the flow. I prefer to omit that. So on my personal equity settings, I like to omit. And some of the stuff that I am omitting, again, don't shoot me, Apple, AMD, Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla. And, and, it, and really the only reason is because I want to have this show and highlight. I don't want to miss a line of flow into something that's really unusual that may only see one line that perhaps never, that is truly unusual, that never sees flow. Um, now, with that being said, when we have a little bit of downtime, you know, after the first 45 minutes, uh, I do go back and I take that off and I do filter through, I'll do individual checks of those tickers. 
Um, or I'll take the omit off and I'll go show me everything that's 500,000 and above just to make sure I'm not missing anything. I, I do my due diligence and I go back, but as far as what I'm seeing, I want to catch the one-offs. I want to catch those gems that never see something that's going to go, you know, triple in one day because all of a sudden it just got bombarded with flow and it may have only been one line. It's difficult for me to do that with all the flow that comes into the mega caps. So that's my preference there. Charlie, do you want to talk about your preference? And and I have to be honest, I, I crutch off of you because I know that you're watching it and T lamb. So I feel like I'm okay omitting that because I already know you guys are keeping that on watch and, and covering that. Anything you do different on this one? Uh, on that one? No, no. Okay. Okay, so while we've talked about having the individual names and stock, um, I, I get a little bit extra here with how I set up um, the uh, equity, I'm sorry, the ETFs. And I actually like to split this off into three tabs. Again, it's the organization that's really helped me catch the most stuff. Um, so on one tab, what I'll do is I'll have ETF selected and I'll also go down here and I will omit. And on my omit, I'm omitting SPY, Qs, and IWM. There's just way too much flow that comes through there to be able to have come through on a consistent feed. I mean, if you even just downloaded and looked at what came through in just those three, you have almost half of every bit of options flow that comes in. Uh, and the reason I do that is because I want to see a solo line item come into triple leveraged bull China yin with 200,000. I, I would miss that if I only had all the ETFs together. Um, so again, this cleans it up for me, weeds it out and lets me be a little bit more focused on those individual ETFs as well as those leveraged ETFs. But I do still watch that. I just opened yet another tab and I keep this now as a watch list item that's only. So now I have only selected. And let me go back to watch list to make sure that you're kind of keeping up because I know if you haven't used this feature, it's going to be a different, a little bit of a difference. And it is a little bit of work in the morning. I have to, you know, open each of these tabs and make sure they're set up, but it, it the time saved and, and what I'm able to kind of gain and quickly maneuver by having these tabs selected is, is just been absolutely worth it. So I no longer have that omitted because if you remember on the one tab, I had it omitted. I'm now telling the system to only show me these. And so now I have one tab that's completely dedicated to just looking at only SPY, Qs, and IWM. So I'm not missing anything. I'm just keeping myself very organized so that I could consistently go through these tabs throughout the day. Um, and then there is another tab that I like to look at and I've recently added this and it's in only multi-leg. If you guys haven't been paying attention, this is a new addition to the filters. Love, love, love this. Multi-legs catch a lot of activity. That's going to be your advanced strategy spreads. Definitely subscribe to the channel because we're going to be covering a lot of option writing, all these different strategies you see here, what Charlie, we've actually already started. So we'll be releasing those soon, but you can have only multi-leg on the system to where you're weeding out all of the directional flow and now able to kind of clean it up, organize it so that you can see some of that other activity that comes in, those risk reversals, those um, call debit call spreads, just a lot of different information that comes through. Now, I will tell you, it is, again, a lot of information. I'm looking for the new positions. And if you know the color coding with black box, yellow is going to be uh, OI exceeded. So I do just go yellow and magenta, and I take off white. Now, if I see a large position, I still go back and see if it's a potential role. I just do this so that it's very quick and eye-catching, but trust me, I go back, I add the filters on, I, I go through and troubleshoot and look at different things um, before I'm mentioning anything on voice or sharing anything. I, I do want to still get the lay of the land there, but this is the gem. This is the gem. Um, Charlie, I'm gonna set this up to how you filter because this has been a moneymaker for you. Let's talk about I these. Love this filter right here. Weekly yellow. So opening again. 
and over 50K. This is my favorite by far filter so far. And this is like your Momo 5000 scanner? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Momo 5000 scanner. So what are you weeding out? Why is this? Why do you like this? What's it? What's it telling you? What's the filters telling you? The urgency. Okay. The urgency. It says yellow and, opening new. Yep. And a lot of times I'll even run this at, at, at above ask at or above ask uh, so that it gets both of them. The at just ask and above ask. So a lot of times I'll turn that on, uh, which even gives me another layer there. So I'm not really looking at always the the uh call writing or the put writing on this filter per se okay uh so something that i love about this is because again you're talking about the opening and we're talking about weekly positionings so think about being a wednesday and you're seeing a new position open that's over fifty thousand. that definitely gives you a little bit more intent um, Charlie, are you solely going off this scanner? Or are you going ooh ooh, or are you going back to your other tab to make sure that's clean? We talk about that a lot. Is it clean? I, I do, I do. I will, you know, uh, see if there was a bunch of whites or purples that you know could have been rolled all into one cell or something. So I will do that. Okay, good. And I think that's worth mentioning because I do the same thing. While I love to have the filter set up because I can keep this on a separate tab. And again, I work with multiple, my, Charlie doesn't, he works off of like a Walmart laptop, but I work with multiple <laughs> screens. So I have this one up so that I could quickly see it. And it's just letting me know that's yellow, it's new, it's new. Like that's really where you can catch some of that momentum. But I always go back and I do that double check. Now, one thing, because I know that Charlie's watching that weeklies and we're always on voice together. One thing that I've actually done to mine instead of keeping it 50 K cause I know I'll still catch it is I'm just keeping it extremely open just for any new positions. And it, it, it still is very slowed down because you're weeding out anything that's white or purple, you know, like existing a lot of the other stuff. And then I can now go to my other filters and check that out. And I know this may seem a little overwhelming, but I've gotten asked about this video several times. So I did want to kind of break that down. I think it's important that you first understand and that you are building out a watch list and that could be based off of your criteria. You certainly don't have to use or set up the same way that I do. You may heavily trade Apple or heavily trade Tesla. Those are not usually the names I'm gravitating to. I like to look for very new names. So make sure that you're filtering this, setting yourself up for what your own personal trading style is. Some caution, don't get too cute here with filters. Okay. Um, something that we see people is we, they click everything here and then they click all this here. You're overloading. You've got to remember that this is kind of coded out and you may be canceling stuff out if you start to get too crazy with it. I, while we're here and have the opportunity, I do kind of want to talk through some of these other filters and where there may be um, an advantage or maybe perhaps you didn't know. Let's say on the sector side, yes, this is all by default, but the only reason that, that we even added this was um, something that we constantly mentioned throughout the day is, you know, the sector rotation, what sectors are, uh, leading lagging, or perhaps we see some ETF flow that's notable size into healthcare. If you were curious and wanted to know what individual names were coming through, you can certainly take the rest of this off and be able to run this as a search. And this is great to be able to do after hours on the weekends. If you know there's this particular sector of interest, you can isolate this now by sectors. Um, let's talk about expiration. Uh, you can use this, this, this is extremely helpful to be able to backtrack when you're looking at trying to do historical look back lookups. Um, if you go to filter and you know that you had something in Tesla that was expiring, you know, September or something, and you wanted to still see if they were an OI or if they closed, this is where this is extremely helpful, but also, make sure you're always checking this, that you don't have these selected in the morning when you come in. Um, a few others. Uh, sweep only, you can certainly do that. I think sometimes that 
for me, that constricts the flow. I, I want to see everything because I want, it's more important for me to know how that comes in. Um, you could also add multi-leg. I think that gets extremely busy, uh, but you can certainly do that, especially if you're looking, I'll do that oftentimes when I'm looking at a certain name that's come through, I'll add multi-leg just to make sure I'm not missing anything. What else? Oh, one of the newer filters is show X dividend. So that's something that black box, I think was one of the first to initiate. A lot of times people will, um, get to the moon because they see unusual volume, but they're not realizing that it's dividend flow. And that's something the system has done as a safeguard because dividend flow is usually not actionable. It's all blocks, it's all known activity. And we've seen too many people jump into something just because they're seeing that size, but not realizing that there's the dividend date or even understanding that this is normal flow that you see around dividend why we added this is if you happen to see that flow and you want to be able to see it, to be able to analyze it yourself, you can now only show um, X dividend flow that will come through. This unusual activity scanner is probably one of the most underutilized. Um, test this one out, start tomorrow and after the first 30 minutes of the market, click that and you're going to get some names. Okay, like I've never heard of this RVPH. Uh, this is one right here. You start to get stuff that never usually sees flows and that can definitely be something that is some movers. So just kind of a walkthrough on how we each personally set ourselves up, how to navigate, how to work through. Charlie, anything well, to that? You know, one more that I do run is the, the 200,000 just yellow. And sometimes I'll even bump it to five because like Mel says, occasionally I'm going to miss something. So I've got a 50K yellow weekly. But that doesn't tell me all the big yellows are maybe missing for infinity, right? So uh, I do run that as a separate. I run four tabs. I run uh, all, the, which is everything, ETF and all. Then I run a 50K yellow. Then I run a 200 plus K yellow. Then I run a multi-leg only. Okay. But, I mean, a lot of ways to cover it. And what I really... I'll, I'll tell you where I mess around more with the value um, is my midday checks, because if I'm on the regular stock side where I omit, I'll take that off. And I do want to see if there's been 200,000, you know, into any of the big mega caps. Um, usually I'll start with a million and work my way down. Uh, but I, I still want to see that. I just don't want to have and be overran by 10,000 sweeps for weeklies that open, close, open, close, open, close, because it's heavily traded. So a lot of good insight there. And especially for your end of day um, research, you know, to be able to start with that 1,500,000, just if you're somebody who works during the day, this is a great resource. You want to make sure you have all this open here don't omit anything. Um, and Charlie, I remember this from back in the day when you talked about how this is how you filtered. All right. So we've got CRM here with, you know, 2.8 million, um, for 1117, you've got some stuff that you can start looking at and at least starting yourself off with where you have the most notional value. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of great opportunities by just playing and maneuvering the filters. So Please reach out if you have any questions or want us to look at your filters or, you know, have insights on how you use your filters. Right. And, and, and a lot of times I want to say this again, though, we are running multiple tabs and, you know, we'll, on the tabs we're running, we might go in and change and alter just to get a different look, but you can run multiple tabs. Um, yep. I think y'all may be able to run up to three, I want to say, which is, is, is fine. Yep. And uh, watch this video two or three times because I know it sounds like a lot of information, but actually once you start playing with those filters, it's like playing Mario Brothers. It becomes second nature. Oh, I'm supposed to jump and get the coin, jump and get the coin. Uh, it all becomes second nature. So watch this a couple of times. Like she said, definitely reach out. We'll look at your filters, help you out. And um, yeah. Great. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Charlie. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Look forward Thank to you, Mel. Bye.